Barrett, and welcome to the big Saturday show. The big story tonight, FEMA finally arriving in East Palestine, Ohio, more than two weeks after that toxic train derailment that is causing health problems in the community. Residents have been begging for help ever since. And just yesterday, a Biden administration official telling Fox News Digital FEMA doesn't respond to these types of disasters. The official saying, quote, what East Palestine needs is much more expansive than what FEMA can provide. FEMA is on the front lines when there is a hurricane or tornado. This situation is different. Apparently, the federal agency reconsidered. Well, I guess they're, you know, they're finally showing up, but uh, I think it's a little late. Uh, I'm glad they're coming, but, you know, I think they should have been here long before this. They've told us since there's a responsible party, uh, this isn't FEMA's job. They're more of a natural disaster uh, type agency. Um, you know, but our, our, res- our residents need help. Um, it could be years before we know the true effects of this. The railroad company, Norfolk Southern, also showing up. The CEO met with East Palestine earlier. He told reporters he was there to, quote, support the community. All right, so let's start this off. And, and, you know, Charlie, I spoke earlier today with one of the residents. I mean, we really have a situation here where these residents are told the water's safe, but yet they can see for themselves the film in standing water. Here is a montage of what some of the residents have been saying. Take a listen. Our town looked like a war zone for five days, and then we were told, you're good to go home. We're sick of this. We didn't ask for this. And, um, you know, if everybody's tired of listening to everybody around here, you know, say how we don't feel safe, then you come here and live for a week and tell us how you feel. There's still several areas of standing water with slick uh, iridescent chemicals on them thousands of feet of oil covered rocks against the tracks. Uh, This hasn't been cleaned up properly, uh, putting profit over safety. What do you make of that, Charlie? Yeah, it's really amazing to think about this. Uh, you know, I, I don't know what part of federal emergency management uh, agency this does not apply here or the Environmental Protection Agency, agency doesn't apply here. Uh, but it, uh, and, and I guess, you know, it's it's not FEMA's role until it becomes a political headache and then it does become uh, FEMA's role. But the thing that really is amazing to me is you have a catastrophe like this, a, an obvious uh, environmental disaster. And, you know, from the same people who every time there's a hurricane, Every time there's not hurricane, every time it rains, <clears throat> every time it's too hot, every time it's too cold, they talk about the environment and they talk about how we need to address this in some federal way. And then you have something that is so obviously an environmental catastrophe and it's crickets. It's like it's it's like they they and, and it really does sort of make you realize that so much of this stuff is uh, is politically motivated. And if they if it's not something that they can exploit for their own political advantage, they don't care. You know, Tommy, the congressman from that area, Bill Johnson, weighed in a little bit about FEMA's lack of response. Here's what Congressman Bill Johnson had to say about it. FEMA originally said no because Ohio did not qualify. Uh, And so the governor, uh, when the governor was told no, I led a delegation letter uh, that said, wait a minute, if this is not a disaster, then you tell me what is. Republicans and Democrats here in Ohio said, FEMA, you need to get engaged. You need to come here and see for yourself. And so they're coming today. Tell me. It's also worth noting that when Donald J. Trump announced that he would visit the area, (laughs) then quickly FEMA decided maybe they should step in. So you're exactly right, Charlie. This does feel very politically motivated. And beyond that, I can't help but think about this term that we've discussed over the last several years made famous by Donald Trump, the forgotten Americans, because it feels like these people in this area, a more lower class, middle class, white area of Ohio, these are the quintessential forgotten Americans that are just glossed over. And now they've essentially been nuked and nobody seems to care. They get coverage, of course, independent journalists. You've got journalists on the ground trying to cover it, but largely ignored by the federal government that would and should be sweeping in to help these people. They've got drinking water concerns. You're exactly right about the environmental concerns. I don't see Greta Thunberg there. I don't see Al Gore. I don't see John Kerry. We have a real situation with real people being affected by this, and they don't want, you know, their grandchildren to have feet growing out of their ears, and I think that's a very 
legitimate concern. Well, that's a great point. And in, in not even just the down the road catastrophe and problems, which is so much of the concern for it based on past incidents like this. But the one gentleman I talked to, Lisa, Ben Gardner, he, he said that he literally had taken some local news cameras down to get near the track and he was vomiting by the end of the day. So is this, to Tommy's point, a little bit of the case of, you know, exhibit A of why the American people in communities like this have lost faith and confidence in our government and in the fundamental role they should be providing. Yeah, but you have the EPA administrator, administrator Michael Regan, saying trust the government. How, how could anyone trust the government? Would you trust the government with your life? I would you Would you water. trust the government with your children's lives, the lives of your grandchildren at this point? No, especially not after how much they lied to us during COVID, lied to us about lockdowns, lied to us about vaccines. Oh, they're safe and effective. And then you have the former head of the APA uh, under George H or George W. Bush, rather, uh, who recently apologized for telling the public that the air was safe to breathe at, breathe after 9/11, saying the air was safe to breathe after Ground Zero. Well, what happened? You had yeah. tens of thousands of illnesses resulted from that. People dying of cancer and a variety of other Ill illnesses. So you have the people of East Palestine saying, you know what? I I'm going to believe what I see with my own eyes. I'm going to trust common sense and my instinct, yeah. not the government. And, and how can you blame them? Yeah, and you know what's so maddening about this is you think of Democrats as being the party that says, you know, oh, no, the, the federal government is great. It's going to solve all your problems. It does. Well, it, like, this is really incompetent. And incompetence is not a real good way to sort of promote your argument that the federal government is the answer to all your problems. It's not, obviously. Just look here. And, you know, Tommy, listen, I remember being in Hurricane Katrina. It's the first hurricane I covered. After that, I was like, I'm not sure I want to do another one of those. <laughs> really bad. But obviously, during the Bush administration, there was a lot of criticism for FEMA. And there's been a whole lot of incidences in between. But you would think eventually they would learn. When you can see on every cable news channel humans, uh, Americans suffering somewhere, that's your cue to get on the ground. To heck with the red tape. Well, speaking of Katrina, do you remember the grief that President Bush got because he wasn't immediately there for Katrina? He got a lot of uh, comments that he was a racist. He didn't care about black people. I think Kanye West is the one that uttered that one. And he made an explanation for it, saying, hey, listen, there's a disaster going on. If I go there, then me having Secret Service, that's going to take away from the situation. This is not the same kind of situation. Joe Biden should be there. Pete Buttigieg should be there. They should ah. be reporting on this. But furthermore, there are a lot of average Americans out there that are watching what What's happening on our own soil in Ohio to these forgotten Americans and they're looking at the billions and billions of dollars we're sending over to Ukraine and watching Republicans and Democrats every day shed a tear for Ukraine saying we should send more money and they're thinking but Ohio is our backyard and we have nothing we can yeah. do for these people it's it's outrageous you, you you raised Mayor Pete he took 10 days to respond to this Lisa I want you to take a listen yeah. to what Mayor Pete had to say about these disasters while this uh, horrible situation ha has gotten a particularly high amount of attention, there are roughly 1,000 cases a year of a train derailing. <laughs> Yeah. Your well, response? He's like, I am so bad at my job. This happens all the time. You know, but to Tommy's point, I asked this on a number the other day. Would, would the left care, would the media care more if this happened in Ukraine, as mm -hmm. opposed to a town, a county that went for Trump by over 71 percent and is 98 percent white? I mean, this is a time where you have Pete Buttigieg talking about the fact that there's too many white construction workers. You have Kamala Harris after Hurricane Ian talking about how equity needed to be considered in the way that the financial aid was doled out. Right. So these are just the wrong people. These are the people that this administration doesn't care about, the forgotten men and women, to your point earlier. Uh, and it's sad because we should care. And, and I think the saddest thing about Pete this. Pete Buttigieg should care. He's the head of the Department you know, of Transportation. What happens when the media leaves? When the federal government stops paying attention, and we the, have no idea what is going to be caused from this 10, 20 years down the road. And, and, and the fact that, you know, we know that they're willing to politicize absolutely any sort of natural disaster. But then they take it even a step further and uh, by making everything about race. And all that does is it, it obviously divides Americans. But it, for, for, for politicians, it's very effective in terms of, uh, of, of pitting everyone against one another and uh, getting them reelected. Well, and it seems there was a moment there where the administration wanted to just let the railroad take the hit here. And obviously it was caused by the railroad, but yet that's not 
the railroad uh, is the firemen to come to put the fire out while the house is burning down. And yeah, it's, it's kind of it's kind of interesting because you know usually you think of Republicans as being uh, the, the the you know big com- you know in defense of big companies mm-hmm. and stuff. all the all the fire that Norfolk Southern and others are getting right now is coming from Republicans who are horrified by what's happened in you know in these creeks and and yeah. wells and and uh, ditches. I think you're going to see bipartisan investigations into this response. Yeah. This was not. Should, right? I mean, out of a scale of one to ten, it seems like this one was like a one at best. But.